Ooh, more moves in free agency. Gotta love it. We seriously lost to the Oakland A's in the preseason yesterday. We were supposed to win every game in 2022 with all the new signings we made. We were supposed to be the best team Chill. in the United States with how good of our signings we were. Getting. The Angels should have not lost that game. Everybody on this team is terrible. Trade them. Don't be so what? dramatic. Dude, what the are you talking about? It's the flippin' preseason. It was our B team playing. I know they tried to pull, they pulled like a vintage Angels of the regular season, but it's the regular season. The games don't matter. It's the preseason. The games don't matter. They matter to me though. The overly low Angels fans want winning and winning only. That's almost impossible to achieve. That is correct. You're not going to have any luck with that. So, whew, don't know why the overly loyal Angels fan is so dramatic. I hope that coffee was good for him today. So, I'm here today, my friends, to tell you about a preview of a preview of what we should look like in the regular season and a couple more moves we made in free agency. Let's get to it. Let's start with one of our new free agents. Both of these are for the bullpen. Everybody say hello to Archie Bradley. Hello. Archie Bradley is a man of a super unique and awesome beard. He is an experienced reliever in this league, coming off of a pretty solid year with the Philadelphia Phillies, going 7-3 with an ERA of 3.71. Nice. Pretty decent. Signs a one-year deal with our Halos. Bradley's been a very solid reliever throughout his entire career. His best season in terms of his ERA was in Arizona in 2017 when he went 3-3, three three, posting a 1.73 ERA. Very impressive indeed. If I was to try, if I could find his FIP numbers somewhere, I would gladly tell you about those. FIP is that statistic where you have the... Uh, um, essentially the pitcher getting not needing his defenders and how well he is able to strike the guy out. Interesting. So Archie Bradley, if you watch him pitch this year, he will be a three-pitch pitcher. He features a fastball, a curveball, and a changeup. Fastball is one of his better pitches. I remember a highlight of him with the Diamondbacks. He can throw high heat. He can get up around 98. I'm not sure if his velocity is still the same as it was a couple years ago. He had a couple of injuries in years past. Ow! Uh, can still strike guys out with some high heat, though, um, though it might not be as fast as it was a couple years ago. Uh, averages 94 on the fastball in terms of his speed, 78 MPH on the curve, and 86 on the changeup. Most impressive. His average exit velocity is in the 84th percentile, so he may give up a little bit of hard contact. Uh, his K percent, his whiff percentage is very low, two in the set only in the second percentile, and not a lot of spin on the curveball, only in the third percentile. So, Archie Bradley has had a couple of command issues throughout his career, but he's still a very, very solid reliever. He, as I said, seven and three last year in his career, he is uh, thirty and twenty-eight. 6.0 war, meaning wins above replacement. Actually says here on stat for stat cast pitch arsenal four pitches. The other pitch I forgot Bruh. to mention was a slider. And it says here the four seam fastball he throws about 47% of the time. A sinker ball that he throws 23.7% uh, of the time. A curveball 15.5% of the time. And a changeup 13.9% of the time. Interesting. Look for Bradley to be used in a sixth inning role or as a guy who might clean up a mess if a starter is doing bad and he might get pulled after, say, maybe the fourth or fifth inning. Now let's discuss our next reliever free agent that we signed. Everyone say hello to Ryan Tapera. Hello there. Two year deal that he signed. Uh, don't know how much it was for. Let's see, he has pitched the same amount of time as Archie Bradley since 2015, plays the majority of career with the Toronto Blue Jays. Also spent time a little along the way with the Chicago Cubs and the Chicago Cubs, uh, Chicago counterpart team, the Chicago White Sox. So Tapera didn't really break out until 2017 when he went 7-1 as a reliever. That's pretty good. Tapera, for his career, is... 
in his career. He's 12 and 14, so not a lot of uh, wins and losses there. Um, for the once for a 162 game average, that would be a record of three and three. For his career, he is uh, in a 162 game average. That is a 3.48 ERA, and overall he has a FIP of 3.99 for a full season average. Last year his FIP was 2.56, which is great. As I said, FIPs around three are good. So. Let's see, Ryan Tapera, has, as I said, has been a very solid reliever throughout his career. A whip for his career, walks, hits, five innings pitched uh, at 1.117 for a full season average. 1.1 one, one, ones across the board in terms of his whip number in 2021. He actually, had, in 2021, his, uh, between Chicago, actually, it says here, because he played with uh, both the both Chicago teams, he actually had a .785 whip with the Cubs, which is ridiculously good. Look for Tapera to be used, as I said, probably in the same role as Bradley, maybe like your true sixth inning guy. Not really sure. For his career, 4.9 war, and last season, had in 2021, had a 2.79 ERA. Now let's talk about how, um, what type of pitches he owns. So unlike Bradley, Tapera is not super overpowering with the stuff that he possesses for his pitches. Ryan to Ryan relies on five pitches. The slider, the four-seam fastball, the sinker, the changeup, and a curveball. Interesting. Let's read him from, le from most to least what he relies on. Starts with his slider. Very increased usage of his slider resulted him in ha yet having a much better 2021. His, his slider usage increased by 30% from 15 to 45. So you, that's going to be his go-to pitch whenever we're watching him. Keep your, and we'll keep your eye on that. He's going to wear number 52. Bradley will wear number 23. No. Along with the slider, forcing fastball, he uses a third of the time. The sinker uses 11% of the time. The changeup is used 10% of the time. And his curveball, he uses 0.5% of the time. So don't expect uh, too many curveballs out of our friend Ryan Tapera. Yes, according to the graph, his... Sinker usage has dropped off a lot, and that's what made his slider so much more lethal. His fastball usage has been steady throughout the years, according to Baseball Savant here. And, and in other news, according to the percentile rankings, his whiff percentage is near the top of the league in terms of the percentiles. He's at the 96th percentile there, which is great. Chase rate is near the top at 80, in the 85th percentile. Impressive. His walk percentage is middle of the road. Um... Here's some other, and here are some of the other stats. I'll just show them to you right here, and you can tell me, and you can take a look for yourself and tell me if they're good or not. Here you go. Personally, I think Tapera is the better signing between the two, and as I said earlier, expect him to be your sixth, maybe seventh inning guy, depending on Joe Madden wants to use them. So, really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to the season opener. Don't know about you. Comment below if you're going to a game this season. I would really love to know. So, my friends, for this brief Angels episode, that is going to do it for our free agents. If there is another free agent signing somehow in this preseason, I will make another video and let you know about it. Click like if you like this video. Subscribe for more tariff-free content. And click the bell to be notified when new content is posted. Have a good night. Stay safe. And go, Angels. And let's get ready for a great 2022 season.